This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. All right, we're now reported. Okay, we can call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of East Hampton. Today is Wednesday, November 16th. We are performing a hybrid meeting where we have members both in person and remote. Uh, first administrative item is the minutes from the August 24th, 2022 meeting. They were sent out, I believe. Okay, is there any questions concerning those meeting notes? All right, can I get a motion for approval? Make a motion. Okay, we have a first, we have a motion. I have a second. And a second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, show of hands. Okay, minutes pass accordingly. Great. Okay, our first hearing, we have Patty Doherty seeking a special permit for a major home occupation or a personal training business Indigo Fitness in accordance with section 10.4 and 12.7 of the zoning ordinance. The subject property is located at 82 Lovefield Street and zoned rural residential. So, Patty, if you could please uh, explain if any further than what you already explained in the in your dissertation as to what you uh, are looking to do. Um, so I have a personal training business. Currently, I see people over Zoom or I go to their homes. I have clients who want to come to my home, um, which would be much better for my business. Um, it would be, um, let's see, what are the questions? There would probably be 10 to 12 people per week. They would only come by appointment. Um, there is no signage, no additional lighting, no hazardous materials. I have sufficient parking, so there wouldn't be waiting in the street for parking. Um, uh, what else do you want to know? I would be using less than, I think it's 30% of my house for the- 33%. 33%. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I would be using less than, much less than that for the house. The um, the hours would be would fall within the guidelines that are listed in the major home occupation, um, whatever these are. The, the hours are eight to eight yeah. uh, during the week and 10 to six on okay. weekends, which is what you put in the narrative. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah, any questions? There's no special equipment. There's no major deliveries happening. I don't sell product. We basically be one person coming at a time, them leaving somebody else. Okay. All right. So with that said, um, do we have any, does any member of the board have any questions for the applicant? I did have a list of questions and she just answered them all. So well done. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to run through a list of conditions that we must find in order to meet the regulations for zoning ordinance 10.4. And we just have to do it just because we have to say it in public. Uh, the owner operator of every home occupation shall reside within the dwelling property, which the business operates do. Uh, no more than 33% of the existing floor area, gross floor area of a residential unit shall be devoted to a home occupation. You could address that. There should be no display or storage of finished goods, raw materials, inventory visible from the street or lot lines. Trust that. There should be no storage of goods or products produced off-site unless they are used as a raw material to be combined with a finished product. They are used as inventory or material services performed for the off-site destination. That's considered that not applicable. Uh, there should be no sale of products or services that are not produced on the premises. You trust that. No advertising on premises is permitted other than a small non-electric side not to exceed two square feet in area. You said you're not going to put up a sign. The premises and building on which the home occupation is conducted may not include a feature or design not customary in a residential use building. It's a pre-existing building. Are you going to make any modifications to your building as or house as a result of this business? Not because of the business. Not because of the business. Okay. 
Any newly installed or recently replaced lighting fixture shall be aimed and shielded so that not to shine upward or produce light beyond the boundaries of the property in which the home occupation is conducted. Are you going to add any lighting? Any addition, alteration, or change to the building must comply with all area, height, block, bulk, and setback restrictions as described within the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance. You're not making any modifications. This one is definitely not applicable, applicable but where you have to read it anyway. Uh, toxic, explosive, flammable, combustible, corrosive, radioactive, or similar hazardous material should not be used. So that's the case. And all street parking for the home occupation shall be provided as described in section 10.1 of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance. And you start to arrange for that. Hang on, number 12. Traffic associated with the home occupation not, shall not place an unreasonable burden on the city's roads or surrounding neighborhoods due to noise, safety, congestion, or other associated uses. If it's one person at a time, I don't think anyone will notice. Uh, no overnight storage of any kind of vehicle on the property is permitted. You're not doing any vehicle or overnight use of vehicles. No more than two non-resident employees shall be employed to work at the subject property. Do you plan on having any employees? No. Okay. Uh, section 10.45.3, unless otherwise determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals, appeals, hours of operation to be public, to the public, include non including non-resident employees, clients, business visitors, as well as pickups and delivery shall be limited to the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 10 to 6 p.m. on weekends, and you address that. Uh, there shall be no increased traffic to the increase to the excess of two vehicles per hour on average during the hours of operation. How long are your typical classes? Uh, 50 minutes. So there should be no increase yeah. in that case. Unless otherwise allowed by the board, only class one and class two vehicles as classified by the mass DOT may be stored or used on the property in conjunction with a major home occupation. And I don't think you're gonna store any vehicles like that. And number 18, the premises and building on which the major home occupation is conducted shall not be made objectionable or detrimental in any manner, including but not limited to the exterior appearance or emission of atmospheric pollution. I think that all of that is pretty much taken care of. So that addresses section 10.4. We need to address these separately. 12.7? And then go to 12.7. Uh, you mean like you need to vote on 10.4 yeah. separately? No. Okay. No. I, I don't, I didn't recall. I yeah. Sorry. No, okay. okay. And in regards to a special permit criteria of section 12.79 of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance, the board found, finds that conformance uh, with the provisions of the ordinance of the city of East Hampton and general laws of the state of Massachusetts, all applicable rules and regulations of state and regular or federal agencies the board finds that the proposed use of the residential structure complies with all standards of major home occupations under the zoning use. There we read again. Did we miss any? Oh, that's no, it. that was a. Yeah. That was a. Okay. Yeah. Uh, protection of city amenities, abutting properties through the minimization of any detrimental or offensive use or destruction of unique or important natural scenic or historic features in the site, you're not doing any modifications. Minimization of traffic and safety impacts of proposed development, there's no development. Adequacy of the methods of disposal of sewage or refuse, um, are you going to have any additional sewage or refuse? As a, Adequate means of protecting wetlands, watershed aquifers or well areas, not applicable. Mitigation of adverse impacts of city resources, including the effects on city water supply, not applicable. Provisions for self uh, for off-street loading and unloading of vehicles incidental in the normal operation of establishment. You have off-street parking. Applicants' efforts to integrate the development into the existing landscape through design features. You're not doing any development. Minimization of the area of which vegetation is to be removed. Not removing any vegetation. 
the consistency of the development in respect to setbacks, area placement, parking, and agricultural styles. You're not doing any development. And advocacy of the measures to prevent pollution of surface or groundwater in minimizing erosion and sedimentation and to minimize changes in groundwater levels, increasing runoff or potential for flooding. You're not doing any modifications. So after reading all of that, Does anyone have any questions? I have one question. As your business grows, do you still plan staying at the same location? Um, yeah. And um, I, there's only so much I can, I would be able to do. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I guess if it was that big, I would not stay at the same location. But uh, since it's only by appointment, um, it's, it's just one person seeing me. So, so on the average, how many people do you see per day? Uh, four to five. And again, just one two at a five, time. Two to five, two to five, actually. Just one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Lisa, any questions? No, I feel like all of those you'd answered in the beginning as well. Any questions that I had? Okay. Matt? Uh, no, I, I, it's very interesting to see that the city has so many parameters around. I mean, everyone, a lot of people work at home these days. I, I understand there seems like the ordinances are designed to prevent industrial type stuff happening and invading a neighborhood. But I think cases like this and like most things, people work from home. I would imagine that the board would agree with city of Ham East Hampton wants to be friendly to work at home and entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, et cetera. So I, I would vote in favor at any time they want to call okay. the vote. All right. Yeah, I'll just say to that point, the reason that this was triggered to be a special permit is because um, Patty's having uh, people come to her house, which makes it a major home occupation. Um, but there are discussions about changing the ordinance so that this kind of thing wouldn't need to come uh, for a special permit. Um, yeah, anyway, so I just want to, to explain the, the why behind uh, this for someone else who's working at home. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Right. And any other questions? No, but just to piggyback on what Matt said there, I, I, I understand this kind of feels like we're, we're not doing much and it seems like it's a, uh, you know, I, I, I've approved at this point, I'll vote in favor, of course, if I'm, I don't know if I'm supposed to vote, I'm an associate member. Um, but I think, I do think it's important to have this because at some point it becomes a, you know, a, a slope where if someone has 50 cars an hour, you know, where do we draw that line? So I think, you know, within this case, clearly there's not really an impact and that's that's what we're looking for. But at some point we're gonna draw the line. I think the procedure's there for a purpose. So I support what we're doing. Okay, well. That's, uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and as I was reading these and I've read them for years, I, I, I look at them and it's, it's, it's one of these, you know, you're not building a development. You just want people to come to your house one at a time to do a workout. But one of the things Eli and I talked about, I have a friend who lives in a uh, colleague, she's a trainer also. And in Northampton, in Northampton, I think she's in Florence, um, their, their role is, if it's just one person coming at a time, you don't have to get the special permit. But if it's more than, to your point, about 50 cars, mm -hmm. that would need a special permit anyway. Yeah, yeah I think that's what we're looking at right. so, doing here as well. Okay. Um, with that said, uh, are there any you know, conditions that we feel we need to put on here, or do we feel that the condition which she has presented in her business narrative do they meet the conditions? So if we say that including the conditions she's presented, sure. we're all in favor of that? I am. Yes. Okay. All right. And so before we can vote, uh, there should be an opportunity for public speak. There's okay. no one here. So Is there anybody out there? <laughs> you never know. Good. All right. Huh? Pink Floyd. You know, all ringing in our head. <laughs> okay. So with that said, we will. Uh, 
call the ordinance or the, the vote. Can I get a motion to approve an or, uh, approval of a special permit for Patty Doherty to operate a major home occupation at uh, 82 Lovefield Street in the city of East End? I'll make a motion to approve the application of Patty Doherty, 82 Lovefield Street, to operate uh, home occupation personal training. Okay. Can I get a second? I second that. All right, and we have a second. All right, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, raise your hands. Okay, everybody, Tim, we'll, we'll let you abstain because we did have enough, but thank you for your attendance. Yes. Okay, so it does pass unanimously. Thank you all. All right, so with that said, um, all, uh, we basically, the, the you are approved, but there is time for us to write up the, the approval, at which point it does go to the city clerk. The city clerk will then has to file it. There's then an appeal period in case someone who could not make the meeting decides they read the newspaper, they would like to appeal it, at which point then you may, you will receive notice to then go to the Hampshire County of Deeds to make this so legal and you would have to be free to operate. So I will sure. get something that's, well, I get like a, what do I, so you'll get, get like a, a notice or something? Yes, yes, you'll be notified. Um, you'll get a copy of the decision, okay. um, which you're responsible for filing with the Registry of Deeds, okay. um, but after the 20 day appeal period. Gotcha. And we'll let you know when that is starting and ending. Okay. It will most likely start tomorrow. Super. Yeah. Okie doke. Yeah, right. great. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Thank you very much and good luck yeah. in your business venture. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a little bit of administrative things we do need to address. So, uh, thanks, Eli. Yeah, have a good night. Good luck, Patty. Thank you. All right. Our next meeting is typically on the fourth of the month. However, we do have a great holiday next month. So we're going to be uh, celebrating on Wednesday, December 14th at 6 p.m. Does that work with everyone's schedule? Yes. Issues with the uh, uh, BPW. Okay. Uh, on to check with your schedule, but the jersey's at five. All right. Okay. So if that works with every, with enough people's schedule, as long as we have five of us, we should be good. And that is provided that we have any submissions by Wednesday, the 23rd at noon, which is next Wednesday. And currently, do we have any applications? Nothing. So there are no applications. Good okay. chance there won't be anything. And then the other thing, um, as we've all learned, Lindsay has apparently decided to leave the lovely city of East Hampton. And so she was, to the best of my knowledge, the vice chair, co-chair, assistant chair, whatever the position is, of the board. Yes, that's a good point. So um, do we want to fill that role this evening? Do we want to wait until the January meeting at which we can then decide who will run the board? How do we want to do that? Um, well, it's up to you. I, I hadn't thought about um, that element of it. Um, should we also say that Lisa is promoted to yes, a full? Yeah, that was, that was what yeah. I was going, you know, I, I actually kind of jumped in, you know, but yes, as, as a result of, of Lindsay's departure, Lisa has now stepped up to a full member, and to the best of my knowledge, you are going to look to continue next year as a full yes, member? Yes, I, yep, I will be continuing next year. I came to that decision. Sure. And, and Tim, that does put you in the, in the on-deck position, should one of us decide to, to move on or, or something happened, but then it does obviously leave another opening as an associate member. Yes. So, um, yeah. And we're working on, uh, Lisa is still technically an interim full member. Um, you can appoint her as chair in the case of an absence, but we're working on figuring out how she can apply to be a permanent full member. Okay. Uh, and then her position will be vacant and can be posted. <laughs> um, so it'll happen, but <laughs> now I started talking to your friends if you know anyone who wants to join the board. Yeah. All right. So 
we haven't made a decision about the the uh, vice chair or or assistant yeah. Uh, I believe it's vice chair. Sure. Sure. You interested, Tom? You have the most seniority next to me. I have more seniority than you. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, can we uh, we have a motion to approve to for Tony? Can we get a second? I'll second. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we got a tie between Lisa and Matt. Any any discussion? Anyone else running against Tony? At least his cat is apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Makes us all human. Makes us all human. Okay. So with that said, uh, can we get a motion? Uh, a, a call the vote for Tony for assistant. Uh, Vice Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, all in favor? Okay. Opposed? All right. So Tony is now the Vice Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And we will have another vote because we have to do this every year in January, right? All right. All right. Yep. All right. Any further discussion? Can I get a motion for uh, dismissal? Make the motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. All in favor? All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, you just need to stop recording. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care, everybody. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.